Well, good evening, everyone. I have a little pulpit here for just a little sermon. Uh, it won't take very long, but I'm looking forward, nevertheless, to sharing with you tonight. God is good, isn't he? He is so good. He is only good. He is always good. And he's got good people. I've met some wonderful people in the family in Tennessee and Missouri and Iowa, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. I met a couple in Minnesota. So uh, God's got wonderful people everywhere. But I don't know, I think especially Iowa. I really, really do. It's just great to be with you tonight. My message is geared toward all Social Security recipients. The Geritol generation, they'll know what I mean. But it's not just for, for older folks, not at all. The message tonight is for anyone and everyone who hopes to get older. And we're going to look to God's Word for our, our inspiration, Joshua chapter 14, Joshua chapter 14. I love this portion of Scripture, and uh, it is my assigned Scripture for the night, and I welcomed it with open arms and open heart because, well, you'll see why. Here we go, Joshua chapter 14, verse 6. Now the men of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me? I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea, to explore the land, and I brought him back a report according to my convictions. Verse 8, but my brothers who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt with fear. I, however, followed the Lord, my God, wholeheartedly. So on that day, Moses swore to me, on that day, 45 years ago, Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses while Israel moved about in the desert. So here I am today, 85 years old, and I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to, to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country the King James Version, I like the way it renders that better. It says, give me this mountain. Now, give me this mountain that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there, and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. And then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, ever since, because third time he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba, after Arba, who was the greatest man among the Anakites, and then the land had rest from war. Now, when you get older, it's easy to start thinking it's over for you. And if you take your cues from society, 
uh, which by the way is never a good idea, you may get the message that you are rather insignificant when you hit a certain age. You've made your contribution and now it all belongs to the young people. And let me hurriedly say, thank God for the young people, thank God for every one of them, and especially those who love the church and want to make the church better. But I had some news for all of us, uh, young or old. People in their 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s still are still important. They still matter. Hello. They're still significant. Well, listen, I'm so significant that people send me mail. Almost every day the letters come in. And I'm, talk, I'm, I'm talking about from important people. I mean, I'm getting letters from senators and presidents and wannabe senators and presidents. I get letters from utility companies and mortgage companies and credit card companies wanting me to stay in touch. And if I don't, what, they'll call me to see how I'm doing. I'm so significant that I am contributing to the welfare of doctors and dentists and plumbers and electricians and roofers and mechanics. I am so significant that restaurants bring me food. <laughs> gas companies sell me gas and department stores lure me in with irresistible sales. I'm important and don't you forget it. And so are you. And that's what I want to talk about today. You are important. And you have a calling upon your life. A calling to answer, an assignment to carry out, a destiny to fulfill, a reward to gain. And here's some lessons I learned from this excited and exciting man, Caleb. The first one is, Caleb affirms his walk in the past. Caleb affirms his walk in the past. That'd be a great time to put that first point up there if that's available to you. <laughs> if not, we'll continue. He said in verse 7, I was 40 years old. In verse 10, he said, and here I am today, 85 years old. For 45 years, I have walked with God. I've been faithful to him. I followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly in verse 8. So Caleb stood up and spoke up for himself. And, and the old boy was not only a good mathematician, but he had a good memory. 45 years before the events of this chapter, God had given Caleb a special promise. And he wasn't about to let anybody forget it. Now I'm sure that Joshua would not have forgotten it. But Caleb is there in his face to remind him, just in case. He's there to represent himself. He's there to, to get what he was promised. He's there to collect on, on that I-O-U that he'd been carrying around in his pocket for 45 years. Now, let's be honest. This society doesn't really highly esteem its elderly. They, they used to, but not so much anymore. And uh, tragically, that goes against history because historically, societies have held their elderly in high esteem. They have honored them and given them great respect. And it's still true in some parts of the world, but not, not so much in this country, not for a while you see, the media and the marketers and the greed mongers shifted the focus to the young where they thought the action was and where the money was. So increasingly, the value of the elderly has been depreciated. You get older, you're in the way of the stampeding herd of the next generation. You get older and people can look right past you as if you're not even there as if you are 
irrelevant. The not so subtle message is your day is over. You've had your time and your turn. You have nothing worthwhile to add to the conversation. In fact, you don't even understand the conversation. You are a relic, and you belong where all relics belong, in a back room out of the way. Do you know what that's called? It's called ageism, and it's as prevalent as racism and every bit as ignorant and cruel. I get a kick out of imagining Caleb. I have no idea what he looked like, but I can imagine him strutting up to Caleb in front of the men of Judah in verse 6, and I got him pictured weighing about 130 pounds soaking wet. But he's still wiry and sinewy and scrappy. And the fire hasn't gone out. You can still see it in his eyes and hear it in his voice and feel it in his handshake. I can hear him say, I'm old, but don't count me out. I have some years on me, but I have some years left. More miles to travel, more battles to fight, more enemies to subdue, more mountains to climb. I'm not ready to retire. I'm ready to refire for the Lord. And he's seen plenty of action, but he's ready for more. You see, there's a mountain out there with his name on it. And you ain't seen nothing Do you see an 85-year-old man go mountain climbing? He affirms his walk in the past. Secondly, I'd like you to notice Caleb affirms his worth in the present. Caleb had been faithful all those years. He had served the Lord with all his heart. What a track record he had. And that's why he should be heard. He's been there and he's done that. He's been around a long time. He's seen a lot. He's learned a lot. He's earned a lot, like the right to speak and the right to be heard. So listen to your parents and your grandparents. Like the dude says on the farmer's insurance commercial, they know a thing or two because they've seen a thing or two. Your parents and your grandparents or vital sources of information, input. They're not infallible, but they have a valuable perspective, one you can't get without putting in your time. And Caleb says uh, in verse 7, I was 40 years old. And, and, and by the way, don't forget, every, every older person was 40 years old at one time, and every young person will be 40 years old Someday, all you have to do is is live long enough. Funny how that works. He said, I follow the Lord my God holy, and I'm still following the Lord holy. Now, that tells us a lot about Caleb. He was a man of insight and wisdom and dedication and patience and persistence. He was a man, undoubtedly, who had weathered a lot of storms, gone through a lot of grief and loss and hardship, But here he is, he's still faithful and he's still serving the Lord. But beyond Caleb, aren't his words also an incredibly significant testimony and tribute to the faithfulness and the goodness of God? And when I look out in a congregation and I see people there who have been faithfully serving the Lord for 20 years, and 30 years, and 40 years, and 50 years, and 60, and 70, and we even have people in this church who have been faithfully serving the Lord for over 80 years. I'm reminded how good and how faithful God is. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. Caleb goes on to say, I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out 45 years ago. Now, most of, most of us can't say we're as strong today as we were in our 40s, if we're beyond our 40s. In fact, 
it's in your 40s that you kind of start noticing things. <laughs> and, and you begin to think, no, no, it can't be, not me. I'm not turning into my dad, surely. And then the 50s come. And then all doubt is erased. Yeah, you too, you too. You're on your, you're on your way. It's a one-way trip on a fast-moving train to Arpsville and retirement and cataracts and joint replacement. You know, you know. I tell people when I was young, I used to, I used to play an hour and a half of tennis over the noon hour and golf on my day off and golf in the afternoon and church softball in the evening. And today, any one of those activities requires medication and bed rest. <laughs> That's just if I watched it on TV. <laughs> so mo Mother Nature and Father Time have a way of teaming up against you. So maybe we're not as strong physically as we were, but thank God it can be another story spiritually. We can be stronger in our spiritual life in our 80s than we were in our 40s. Why? Because we've seen more. We've lived more. We've been through some things. We've gained experience the hard way. One day at a time, one valley, one mountain, one battle at a time. We've seen what the Lord can do. And Caleb affirms his walk in the past, and he affirms his worth for the present. And then thirdly, Caleb affirms his will for the future. Caleb, at 85 years old, still has a mission in life. Yes, I want to challenge our thinking a little about what it means to get older, to see aging from a biblical perspective, to inject a little Caleb serum in us. So Caleb is standing up and he's speaking out to claim what was his, to cash the check, to take the land God had promised him. You're not done until you die. It ain't over till it's over. Old is not out, no matter what society says. And so Caleb shows up, speaks up, and checks in when many his age would be ready to check out. And, so, and Caleb says, I'm here. Give me this mountain. And that's not an easy task. Not when you're his age. Not when Hebron was 3,000 feet above sea level with large cities and fortified walls and the sons of Anakim were there and those were giants. But age is not measured by years. Age is more a, a matter of attitude and spirit. What's up here in our thought processes? What's here? and what our hearts embrace. So we have Moses and Aaron in their 80s leading Israel out of bondage. We have Caleb at 80 years of age climbing mountains. We have Noah building an ark at 120 years of age. We have Anna described as very old in Luke's gospel prophesying over the baby Jesus. We have Paul referring to himself in Philemon as Paul the aged. We are never too old to be of service to the Lord. We take our marching orders from him, not from a society that's wrong pretty much about everything. And then we discover scriptures like Isaiah 46, verse 3 and 4. Isaiah, I have upheld you, God said, since you were conceived and have carried you since your birth, even to your old age and gray hair, I am he. I am he who will sustain you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Psalm 71, verse 18, even when I am old and gray, 
Do not forsake me, O God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your might to all who are to come. Psalm 92, verse 14, they will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock. Still bearing fruit, still fresh, still proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock. I got to wonder what the reaction was from the crowd when Caleb came to Joshua with his lion's roar, give me this mountain. I got to believe that some of the crowd snickered and made fun of him. Well, listen to the old fool. What is he thinking? And no doubt some dismissed him as over the hill, not a candidate for taking a hill. So find the old man a nursing home, get him out of the way. He's had his day, he's yesterday's news. Oh, no. No, no, not when the endlessly creative Holy Spirit resides within him. Not when he is still energized by a God-given vision. Not when there is a mountain with his name on it. And I bet you, I bet you there's one with your name on it too. But the good news, by the way, is that Caleb and his men cast that check. They possessed the land. And the latter verses of the chapter tell us they enjoyed peace and prosperity in it. There's a mountain with your name on it. There's a mountain calling you into your future. Can you hear it? Can you hear it calling? So rally the troops, boys and girls. It's time to go mountain climbing. Give me this mountain. Lord, I thank you tonight for your word. What an inspiration it is. And it connects to every one of us, no matter where we are in life. The youngest of the young and the oldest of the old. There's good news for all of us. There's a place in your kingdom for all of us. There's a role to play, a mission to accomplish for all of us in your kingdom. And the fact is, Lord, we, we need each other. And we benefit and are blessed with the back and forth of one generation with the, with the other. I want to thank you tonight for the young people that take seriously the will of God for their lives. I thank you, Lord, that there are still young people hearing the call of God and saying yes to that call. And out of an endless array of choices, they are saying yes to the call of God and there are pastors and youth pastors and children's pastors and music pastors and senior pastors that are young today and ready to lead us into the future. And I pray, Lord, that you will show them the way so they can show us the way. That you will lead them so they will lead us that they will faithfully serve you and faithfully lead us. But Lord, I want to thank you for those that can be overlooked and perhaps easily dismissed because of advancing years. I thank you for each and every member of the family of God. And I pray, Lord, that you will re-energize, infuse afresh and anew an awareness of God's hand upon our lives and God's calling upon our lives. And may that call of God be met with a matching enthusiasm in our hearts, a Caleb-like spirit. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? I just thought of a chorus that we haven't sung in about a hundred years, uh, at least for me. And Brett, I don't know, it's so old, it's probably older than you. 
uh, but it's time that we taught him something new, right? He's always teaching us something new. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Do you know that one? I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood, joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Hey, you did pretty good. You did pretty good. Yeah, yeah. How many uh, have never heard that one before? All right, we're going to sing it one more time because we'd like for you to hear it again. And uh, after we sing it, you know what would be really, really cool, really neat? Uh, if you're comfortable doing it, and I know we have to have space, but just to have an intergenerational prayer maybe some older folks could find some younger folks and vice versa and we could maintain that distance but just offer a prayer of intercession and thanksgiving for one another in the body of Christ can we do that amen amen I think it'd be a beautiful and memorable way to express our appreciation for those that maybe we don't normally routinely connect with all right let's sing it one more time it's in the key of X I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family the family of God. Amen, amen. Brett, thank you for coming to the keyboard. Your help was indispensable tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Let's find somebody to pray with before we go. God bless you.